pray that we would all have this spirit of prayer that we heard about. I found myself asking that very thing of the Lord. Uh, I want to share some things that I've been, uh, the Lord's been speaking to me recently. If you would turn to Psalms 55. I've been thinking about this matter of um, coming into the rest that the Lord has prepared for us. On Psalms 55, verse 22, it says, Give your burdens to the Lord. He will carry them. He will not permit the godly to slip or fall. And when we read about these burdens, we, we do have um, earthly things that we uh, have to think about. We have earthly things that we care about. But he wants, it's okay to think about them, but not worrying about them. And the Lord, this is a command that the Lord has for us to give our burdens to him. What I found is, um, and the Bible does this a few times, what you see is this idea that rest and humility go hand in hand. And I'll show you this in Matthew 11. These are verses, I'm sure we've all seen these before in Matthew 11. I'm reading out of the Living Bible here. Matthew 11, verse 28. Uh, This is Jesus speaking. Come to me and I will give you rest. All of you who work so hard beneath a heavy yoke, wear my yoke for it fits perfectly and let me teach you for I am gentle and humble and you shall find rest for your souls for I give you only light burdens. I was thinking about this, what the Lord says here. Um, I kind of picture when, when Amazon sometimes drops some boxes off at my house and my wife might order something, and I'm not sure what's in the box. And I see that uh, there's little boxes, there's big boxes. And sometimes in those big boxes, there's something very heavy there. And so I kind of brace myself for picking up something. It might be 40, 50, 60 pounds. And then sometimes uh, the little boxes can be heavy as well. But I picture this, that the devil wants us to think this, when the Lord tells us that, He gives us only light burdens. The devil wants to do the exact opposite and make us think that it's a heavy burden. But then sometimes um, these Amazon boxes that come, sometimes it'll be a very large box and I'm bracing myself to think I've got a heavy load I'm about to pick up here. But then I pick it up and it's as light as a feather. Um, Sometimes, and then I wonder, did they make a mistake? It doesn't feel like there's anything in here. And I'll open the box and I'll see it might just be like some small pillow. And I wonder why they use such a big box. Um, And I think it's that way where the devil wants us to think this. Like there's this tremendous burden that the Lord has prepared for us. And it's the exact opposite. So this way that we find here that of the Lord saying, give, I will give you rest. He says, wear my yoke for it fits perfectly. He wants to teach us about this gentleness and humility that he has. Uh, And other versions say meek and lowly. So I thought about this um, even further in 1 Peter 5. Again, there's another uh, connection here with humility and rest. Uh, 1 Peter 5, it says... uh, Five five, you younger men follow the leadership of those who are older, and all of you who serve each other with humble spirits. For God gives special blessings to those who are humble, but sets Himself against those who are proud. If you will humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God in His good time, He will lift you up. Let Him have all your worries and cares. And this is why the next thing He says, the Living Bible says it this way. He is always thinking about you. That really spoke to me when I thought about that, that the Lord is always thinking about us. And if someone is always thinking about us and he tells us to give him our worries, um, I, th- I, su- I suggest that we take his advice when he says that. Watching everything, he's watching everything that concerns us. You know, especially this time of the year when school is starting up again and there's, um, for a lot of moms and dads and And there's so much going on, all the sports and all the um, curriculums and and the, the school studies and the schedules and the morning routine and the afternoon routine. And there's so much going on and work and 
meetings and and there's so much constantly going on and the Lord is telling us let him have all your worries and cares all of these things the Lord uh, wants us to hand over to him because he's always thinking about us this is something the Lord's really been speaking to me um, I'll close with that, but I, I pray that we would find this rest that uh, the Lord has prepared for us. Amen. Okay, um, I wanted to share something that's been on my heart this week about the tongue. Um, we were looking for a place as a family uh, to go camping, and uh, Callie was looking online, and she found a review for one of the campsites, and um, one of the people had left a negative review, and they said that they left their campsite, and then they came back later in the day, and they found that all of their stuff had been packed up, their campsite was taken down. And there was a note there and a ticket, and it said that um, their fire had been left unattended at the campsite. And um, they were trying to defend themselves, saying the fire was just smoldering. It was a little bit of a, you know, just a little bit of smoke when they left it. Um, but the rangers had taken it super seriously, and they shut everything down um, and kicked them out. And it was a, a fresh reminder for me this week of um, James chapter 3. In verse 5, um, where it says, The tongue is a small part of the body, yet it boasts of great things. See how great a forest is set aflame by such a small fire. And the tongue is a fire, the very world of iniquity. The tongue is set among our members as that which defiles the entire body and sets on fire the course of our life, and it is set on fire by hell. And so... Um, it just it caused me to think this week, just seeing the seriousness, like the rangers know one little spark is enough to get a whole wildfire going, and they take it extremely seriously. And for me, um, to be able to see that one complaint or one word of criticism or a little put down, you know, between husband and wife or brothers or um, some speculation about another person, that this little spark can be enough to cause this wildfire and, and um, for so much to be destroyed. And it says... Um, in verse 7, for every species of beasts and birds and reptiles and creatures of the sea is tamed and has been tamed by the human race. But the tongue, man, the tongue, no man can tame. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. And so we see that the, uh, the tongue isn't something that I can tame myself, that the Lord um, wants me to seek him for the Holy Spirit. And when we went uh, and talked to some rangers about campfires um, and fire restrictions, they said, the, the requirement, the standard, is that you have to completely douse it with water until it's cool to the touch. And um, to me, even just like a little picture of the Holy Spirit, that we need the Holy Spirit um, to help us to completely extinguish that, that spark and that flame of using our tongue um, in a careless way. Um, but I also, I was thinking about our memory verse from a few weeks ago in Isaiah 50, the same one that um, Zach was referencing this morning. Um, that a tame tongue can be so useful to the Lord. And he says, um, the Lord God has given me the tongue of disciples that I may know how to sustain the weary one with a word. So um, this same tongue that with just a spark of, of careless use can cause a wildfire, also it says that um, that we can use our tongue to sustain weary people. Um, and that's been a big burden for me this week. Another word that came to mind um, on this that just shows what a, a tame tongue can accomplish um, is in Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 29. Um, 
But just the contrast here between the idle and careless tongue and the tongue that's tamed by the Lord. It says, let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, but only such a word as is good for edification according to the need of the moment so that it will give grace to those who hear. And um, there's a verse in Hebrews that talks about a grace from a, the need of the moment um, that we receive by boldly coming before the throne of the Lord. And this verse talks about um, a grace for the need of the moment that one believer can give to another. Um, and that encouraged me a lot that if my tongue is tamed by the Holy Spirit, if I can have the ear of a disciple um, listening to the Lord and listening to the Holy Spirit, and I can have the tongue of a disciple, um, that I can actually give grace uh, for a need in, in the present moment to another believer. Um, and I was actually thinking, even this morning, there have been so many times and so many things shared from the pulpit at RLCF or individually with me personally, um, and several of them even this morning before we came here that came to mind that have strengthened me and giving me, given me grace um, in a moment of need. And um, I'm thankful for that. And so in, in light of the things that we heard today and um, in light of this, I want to take account of all of my idle speech now before the day of judgment, and I want to guard my tongue now um, and yield it to the Lord so I can uh, strengthen others the same way. Amen. 